It was probably early man who sat on a boulder and turned it around to a more comfortable position, hence starting the humble design profession. Because to the present day, there's clearly no other item of furniture in history that has been so over-designed as the chair. The chair throughout history has been a symbol of culture. It is a mark of personal status, and from the earliest regal throne to the current chair of everyday use, it is simply not just an object for sitting on, but it tells a story of society, reflecting the social, economic, and philosophical state of that society. The chair can give status and identity whilst possessing an identity of its own. But what about the chair that has no identity until it is used? This seemingly plain cube of foam rubber is cleverly slit so that when the central portion is depressed or sat upon, it forms a chair. And when the person gets up, it resumes the form of a cube. This chair by Robin Day, manufactured by Hilly, is one of the most significant pieces of English furniture design um, of the past century. That may well surprise a lot of people, but it truly is a significant chair because for the first time a British manufacturer made a substantial investment in tooling to enable the serial production of a chair that would be very inexpensive. The critics have difficulty in pigeonholing Arad. Is his work craft? Is it art? It started nice, it had nice things about it. The seamless joint here, and very nice relationship between the back and the seat. There's nothing about a Windsor chair which re requires a high capital investment. It's a wonderfully satisfying object to produce, a chair. I can't think of a nicer object to produce, to design, to conceive, to design and to make. Mies van der Rohe, Corbusier, Rittfeldt, Eileen Gray, some of the greatest names in the design world have produced chairs and put their individual tag on it. But the great chair, the greatest chair of all, probably still eludes us. It's out there to be done.